this is really something that is different than any other jack inhibitor so far. Uh, it is a jack inhibitor, but uh, it also inhibits another uh, target in the uh, body of the person, particularly on the surface of the liver, which is ALK2. Uh, this is a, a receptor that is important for uh, regulation of the hepcidin, a protein that is a master iron metabolism uh, protein in that sense that the higher the uh, hepcidin, the, the lower the uh, survival of the patients, uh, the lower the uh, anemia, uh, meaning the anemia is worse. Uh, and uh, it seems that uh, modifying the hepcidin, lowering it, would allow more iron availability for a terminal uh, maturation of the erythrocytes. The anemia improves by decreasing of hepcidin. And you do this by inhibiting ALK2. Uh, so alternative uh, mechanism of action, not only the JAK1 and JAK2 inhibition, which is anti-proliferative and anti-inflammatory, so people feel better and have a smaller spleen, but through ALK2 inhibition, lowering the hepcidin, meaning more iron availability for making red blood cells, so improvement in anemia, particularly improvement in the uh, what we usually worry about, transfusion requirements elimination of the transfusion requirements, people become transfusion independent, which is easy to understand anemia benefit. Now, why are you asking me about it is because I think that's a very good reason. There was a, a, a phase three randomized study done in people who were previously treated with the ruxolitinib or other JAK inhibitor in front line setting and, and stop it uh, and were anemic and didn't feel well and may or may not have a big spleen. In that setting, in a blinded randomized study, melatonin was compared to danazole, which is anabolic steroid, which we typically give patients for anemia and when they don't feel well. And the, the publicly available results were made about six weeks ago saying that in that blinded randomized study in a second setting, melatonin was very good, uh, superior to danazole in controlling the symptoms, uh, also the spleen, and there were benefits on the anemia, particularly, again, th this is easy to understand, and I'm very happy about that, making people transfusion independent. And we expect that that would uh, possibly lead to approval of mamelotinib next year. And then you're going to have a number four JAK inhibitor on the market in the United States, at least for therapy of our myeloid fibrosis patients. But this one would be, in my view, possibly the number one choice in a second setting. Why people uh, lose the response to ruxolitinib uh, and why are they affected uh, in a negative way by fedratinib, particularly due to myelosuppression. And anemia is leading cause for stopping JAK inhibitor ruxolitinib, for example. In a second setting, once you stop it, people are more anemic, more thrombocytopenic. They still don't feel well and may still have a big spleen. What do you do then when they have low counts? You can do mamelotinib. Uh, it's again a non myelosuppressive, improves the anemia, qualitatively different response than any other. And that's why I think majority of the patients second setting, if the drug gets approved, will be candidate and maybe given more melatonin over others.